والذين كفروا بعضهم أولياء بعض إلا تفعلوه تكن فتنة في الأرض وفساد كبير والذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله والذين آووا ونصروا والذين آووا ونصروا أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم والذين آمنوا من بعد وهاجروا وجاهدوا معكم فأولئك منكم وأولو الأرحام بعضهم أولى ببعض في كتاب الله إن الله بكل شيء عليم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اشترى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فاجهم وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المظلومين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين يا ليتنا ثم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل بيت محمد أي منقلب سينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters, مؤمنين مؤمنات I send my condolences with a heavy heart, first and foremost, to our Imam, Sahib al-Asri al-Zaman, al-Hujjah ibn al-Hasan, and the Ummah al-Islamiyya, and to you all, on the night of the Arba'een of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Abu al-Ahrar, the master of the free, Sayyidi Shababi Ahl al-Jannah, Sibq al-Nabi al-Akram. On a night like this, Sayyidah Zainab and Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi of the salatu wa salam are about to reach Karbala where they have come back from 40 days 
of misery and pain and suffering and tribulations. But through their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their willpower, they didn't just make it through, but they made it through as victors, as successors. And they come to renew their allegiance to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Well, on the day like Arba'in, we all wish to be in between the two holy shrines to renew our allegiance to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, where we say day and night, Labbayka ya Hussein. لَبَّيْكَ يَا حُسَيْنِ لَبَّيْكَ يَا حُسَيْنِ I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from the visitors, all of us, to allow all the Shia of Al Muhammad to be from the visitors of the day of Arba'in, the Ziyar of Arba'in, inshallah, under the banner of his grandson, Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, Ajjal Allah ta'ala, Farajuh al Sharif. Inshallah, we will start with the recitation of Quran. I will bless the majlis with Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjim farajah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Arayta alladhi yukathibu biddin. فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحوظ على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل إن شاء الله just a few announcements before we continue with our program إن شاء الله with our majlis for tonight for the day of Arba'in إن شاء الله we will have our julus Instead, unfortunately, as we are still in lockdown alert level three here in New Zealand and uh, Auckland, uh, I apologize, we're in uh, alert level three, which means we are unable to host an in-person uh, judus, but we will have our spirits, inshallah, and all join together on Zoom at 5 p.m. tomorrow. So, inshallah, I will have the, the link for the judus live, inshallah, tomorrow on our social media channels for the day of Arba'in at 5 p.m. We'll have the recitation of Ziyarat Ashura, as well as uh, Masayib and a short majlis from Samahat Sayyid Muhammad al Mudarrisi, and finishing with Sam Azadar, inshallah. We also have our program for Dua Tawassul, inshallah, tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Uh, after Salat al-Maghrib. Inshallah, we will now have the recitation of Ziyarat Ashura conducted by our dear brother Mustafa Kamali, and I'd like to welcome him with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام على ولي السلام على خليل الله ونجيب السلام على صفي الله وابن صفي السلام على الحسين المظلوم الشهيد 
السلام على أسير الكربان وقتيل العبران اللهم إني أشهد أنه وليك وابن وليك وصفيك وابن صفيك الفائز بكرامته اكرمته بالشهاده واحببته بالسعاده واجتبيته بطيب الولاده واجعلته سيدا من الصاده وقائدا من القادة وذائدا من الذادة وعطيته مواريث الأنبياء وجعلته حجة على خلقك من الأنسياء فعذر في الدعاء ومنح النصح وبدل مهجته فيك ليستنقذ عبادك من الجهال وحيرة الضلال وقد توازر عليه من غرته الدنيا وباع حده بالأرض للأدنى وشرى آخرته بالثمن الأوكاس وتغترس وتردى في هوا وأسختك وأسخت نبيا وأطاع من عبادك أهل الشقاق والنفاق وحملت الأوزار المستوجبين النار فجاهدهم فيك صابرا محتسبا حتى صفك في طاعتك دمه واستبيح حريم اللهم فلعنهم لعنا وبيلا وعذبهم عذابا أليما السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن سيد الأوصياء أشهد أنك أمين الله وابن أمين عشت سعيدا ومضيت حميدا ومت فقيدا مظلوما شهيدا وأشهد أن الله منجز ما وعدك ومهلك من خذلك ومعذب من قتلك وأشهد أنك وفيت بعهد الله وجاهدت في سبيله حتى أتاك اليقين فلعن الله من قتلك ولعن الله من ظلمك ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فربيت به اللهم إني أشهدك أني ولي لمن والاه وعدو لمن عاداه بأبي أنت وأمي يا ابن رسول الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأصلاب الشامقة والأرحام المتهرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك المدلهمات من ثيابها وأشهد أنك من دعائم الدين وأركان المسلمين ومعقل المؤمنين وأشهد أنك الإمام البر التقي الربي الزكي الهاد المهدي وأشهد أن العمة من ولك كلمة التقوى وعلام الهدى 
والعروة الوثقى والحجة على أهل الدنيا وأشهد أني بكم مؤمن وبيا بكم موقن بشرائع ديني وخواتي ما عملي وقلبي لقلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع ونصرتي لكم معدام حتى يأذن الله لكم فمعكم معكم لا مع عدوكم صلوات الله عليكم وعلى أرواحكم وأجسادكم وشاهدكم وغائبكم وظاهركم وباطنكم آمين رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم من عن عدوهم لك Thank you, Mustafa Kamali, brother, for the recitation of Ziyarat uh, al-Arba'in. Uh, my apologies, not Ziyarat al-Ashura, Ziyarat al-Arba'in. And inshallah, tomorrow for our majlis at 5 p.m., we will also have uh, Ziyarat al-Arba'in, inshallah. Up next, we will have our youth speech from uh, one of our Nur Academy students, Ali Yusuf Fayyaz. And I'd like to welcome him with the blessing of Allah's salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma ala محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن عدوهم يا كريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم dear brothers and sisters tonight I would like to share a poem by Nuri Sardar that mesmerized me and inspired me more about my dear Imam Hussein al-Islam The poem explains the beauty of Arba'in. Arba'in is marking the 40th day of the Ashura. It is a day in which millions of Muslims, Muslims and even non-Muslims from around the world gather in Iraq for the Arba'in walk. Uniting as one, no matter their race, they share one thing in common, which is their love for Imam Hussein Muslim. I always place my pride in early Hussein, whilst others place their pride in trees they will trace. There are only two things that make men bitter, neither of them are origin or birthplace. The first is man's piety and fear of God, courageous, selfless, living a life of grace. The second is when their ears hear Hussein's name, a notion of tears begin to stroll down their face. That's all that matters, not skin and not culture, not hometown, not home country, not color, not race. No racist stood on Hussein's side on Ashura, and no racist shall ever feel his embrace. Oh Hussein, I see you embrace your lover. Oh Hussein, regardless of his race or color, Oh Hussein, by you, no stranger, a stranger. I see the day of Ashura, a multicolored Karbala, yet the adopted sons of Zahra they became. A world where a slave African and Wahhab, they, the martyred Christian, with more than a thousand more men, they became. I see Hussein's face by Johnny's face, his cheek he would place. Of one color and of one race, they became. No color beside the color of belief. No color like a branch, one leaf by leaf. No color beside the color of their grief. That day, colors of earth melted. Every color Hussein sheltered. Their faith is all that mattered. What a day. By non Arab, Arab would walk. No backbidden, no racist talk. The Ansari fought by the Turk. What a day. And watching this all, they stood upon 
He held earth's treasures and much more, but traded it all and what for? What a day. On that day, each man hardly worthy culture. On that day, one not better than the other. On that day, their home country, the hereafter. God put race in sons of Adam. In races, he divided them, but it is us who added Islam. What a shame. Racism burns away your deeds. No lamentation intercedes. You bleed the blood that he bleeds. What a shame. If from a race you turn away, Hussein's face from you turns away, saying, are my lovers this way? What a shame. Oh, you who are Hussein's servant, if you judge race for a moment, remember you'll face judgment by your Lord. Servants are teeth of a cone, regardless of their race or their home. I swear they circle Hussein's dome by your Lord. Both comprehend and understand, with no racist shall Hussein stand. You, to you, he won't extend his hand by your Lord. We are one, adopted by the same Imam. We are one, clenching onto our master's palm. We are one, at his help, extending our arms. Thank you for listening. Please recite a salawat along Muhammad Wali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajwam. Alhamdulillah, it is good to see that the youth are still, even online, are getting involved in the majority of Arba'in. This is an important point for all the parents, you know, for all the, all the older brothers and sisters out there as well, is to have the instill that Husseini ideology and that Husseini mentality in the young ones to have them have to fill their hearts with the love of Imam Hussein alayhi salam because the only thing that Imam Hussein is giving to us is love salamullah alayhi something for us inshallah all to strive and work towards up next inshallah I would like to welcome our very special guest coming from Sydney Samahat Sayyid Kazam al-Mudarrisi and I would like to welcome him with the blessing of Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajuhum wa al'an aduwahum ya kareem. الحمد لله رب العالمين أحمده وأستعين وأؤمن به وأتوكل عليه وكفى بالله وكيلا ثم أصلي وأسلم على خاتم أنبيائه وأفضل سفرائه المحمود الأحمد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين المهدي المنتظر فداه أرواح العالمين قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم وإن كادوا ليفتنونك عن الذي أوحينا إليك لتفتري علينا غيره وإذا لاتخذوك خليلا ولولا أن ثبتناك لقد كت تركن إليهم شيئا قليلا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم What does it mean to be a Muslim? If you were to refer to any dictionary, any common dictionary, and look up the word Muslim, it would say that a Muslim is a follower of the religion of Islam, an adherent of the religion of Islam. And this, this is kind of obvious and self-explanatory. A Muslim believes in whatever Islam tells him to believe in. And although the following doesn't apply to all the different ancillaries in the religion of Islam, but our scholars talk about a concept in their uh, books on jurisprudence 
um, called the Varura or Varuri. And Varuri um, translates literally to what is essential or necessary. And a Varuri in Islam is whatever is an essential part of being a Muslim. In other words, these are the things without which you cannot call yourself a Muslim. You cannot be considered a Muslim. And a Varuri could be part of the Usul of Islam um, or part of the Furu' the branches of, of Islam. The Usul, things like the oneness of God. All Muslims believe in the oneness of God. If someone claims that there are Muslims, but also believes in different deities, then this person is not a Muslim. You cannot consider them a Muslim. There are other things as well. Things like prophethood, the hereafter. These are all essentials in Islam. These are all the necessary parts and the necessary beliefs in Islam. And again, these um, varuris could also be part of the furu' things like the obligation of hajj or fasting or salah or even things like the prohibition of swine and alcohol these are necessary and essential beliefs in islam and if you lack any of these things then you are no more called a muslim and of course this has, um, this has other effects as well. For example, we know that the scholars say that whoever professes the two testimonies, whoever says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammad an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, then this person can be dealt with as a Muslim. And therefore, if this person gives you food, that you don't need to ask them whether or not their food is halal. Because this, this person claims to be a Muslim. And so if he claims to be a Muslim, then he follows the rules in Islam and will only eat halal food. But if this person is also one that denies a dharuri in Islam, then you cannot consider them Muslim anymore, even if they profess the two testimonies of Islam. And so this concept of dharuri, even though um, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to uh, understand where, um, where it applies and where it doesn't, but it kind of gives us a general framework of our belief system. And once you are familiarized with the general framework of our belief system, then you can under, understand where your grounds are and you can protect your turf. You can hold your ground. Now, um, you have to make sure, again, as a Muslim, that you protect your beliefs. Now, I should have kind of mentioned this in the beginning, but I'll mention it now as well. It's fine. To Muslims, and I'm sure you've heard this a lot. I've said this before. Um, other people have also said it. Scholars always say this. To us, to Muslims, Islam isn't merely a set of beliefs in the heart. A lot of people say that it matters that whatever uh, that whatever's in the heart is what matters. That's not the case with Islam. Um, it's not merely a set of beliefs in the heart, and it's not merely a set of actions. And so, if you see someone that claims to be a Muslim, but does not follow the rules of Islam, then you can go straight to their face and say, why aren't you acting like a Muslim? And, or acting in the way that Islam tells you to act. Or the same thing would apply to someone on the other extreme side of the spectrum. Someone who steals the properties of, of people, but still goes to Hajj, for example. So they, they still have the Islamic actions, but they're not doing what they should be doing as a Muslim or they're doing what they shouldn't be doing as a Muslim. And so you can go again straight to their face and say, why aren't you a Muslim? Then why aren't you abiding by the religious rules? 
And so once you understand the framework of, of our belief system, you can protect your beliefs. You know which of your beliefs are based on your religion, based on your beliefs. And you also know the ones that kind of have a, a cultural uh, background. And Alhamdulillah, for most people who are living in the West, we are lucky to have the, um, the option or you, you, we, we kind of have the right to believe in whatever we like to believe in. No one can dictate um, what we can or cannot believe in. Not the government, nor some, some shady organization. You have the right to believe in whatever you want to believe in. And in fact, even God doesn't force us to believe in his own existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the option. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, he tells us that this is the right way and that is the wrong way. And it's your choice. It's your choice whether you, you take the, uh, the road to the truth or you go astray. Inna, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna hadaynahu sabil imma shakiran aw kafura. It's your choice at the end of the day. So if God hasn't forced us to believe, to believe in any particular set of beliefs, then why should the government have the option to dictate what, she, what we should or shouldn't believe in? Why should some organization, why should a, a bunch of um, people dictate and tell us what we should or shouldn't believe in? No one can compel you and I to believe in anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and again, this is one of the miracles of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our uh, heart and our brain is sacred. No one could get into our heart and our brain. We choose who to let in uh, to our hearts. Now, once we understand our religion and we understand our beliefs, and our teachings and our values, we are told to protect them. In the same way that others are protecting their ideals, others are protecting their customs and their traditions. And so we have that same right. Again, in New Zealand, you are comfortable enough, you are lucky enough to choose what you want to believe in. And so, once you believe in something, you can protect your ideals, as long as obviously you are not um, getting on somebody else's turf, as long as you are not, um, you know, you, you aren't oppressing somebody else, as long as you're respecting the rights of, of the entire community, then you can believe in whatever you want to believe in. And so we see um, that, for example, the liberals have their ideals that they protect. People of other faiths, the Jews and Christians in some communities, they're very protective of their beliefs and their ideals. And so it's okay for us to also protect our own beliefs. And that's why it, it really saddens me when I see people who always try to uh, tune down their um, their Islam for, for some reason. This is your religion, be proud of it. Now, what we have to understand is that once we call ourselves Muslims, once we um, consider ourselves as adherents of the religion of Islam, we need to understand that anyone who doesn't follow our religion, people from other faiths, people from other sects within Islam. These people are different. And so we draw a red line. And we understand that their practices, if they are not in line with our own practices, which are sourced from the Quran and from the traditions of the Prophet then we will not engage in their practices. It's as simple as that. Now, 
It doesn't mean in any way, shape, or form that we shouldn't treat other people, people of other faiths, with respect and kindness. Far from it, I'm not insinuating that. In fact, I, I told you um, in the night before that, um, that Muslims are taught that there are rights that are uh, non-denominational. These are the rights that apply to all human beings. Um, whether you're a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Jew, a Christian, it doesn't matter. There are rights that apply to you. And so I'm not saying that we shouldn't respect other people or that we shouldn't treat them with kindness, but we have to understand that we are different. They also must understand that we are different. And so if, for example, uh, during lunch break, you go to your teacher and you, you, know, you ask them for permission to go to one of the classrooms to pray, of course, you need to be respectful um, to, you know, to uh, the officials. And also you need to be uh, respectful of, of the place that they are uh, entrusting you with. And so you go to them and you ask them permission uh, to go pray. Then they have to understand that as a Muslim, there are practices that you need to um, engage in. You have salah, you need to pray every single day. And so it's okay for us to realize and understand that we are different. And it's okay for other communities to also realize and understand that we are different. Therefore, we have different actions. We do things differently. It's okay, it's fine. Now, understanding, again, understanding the difference doesn't mean that we aren't respectful of other communities. We aren't respectful of, of other people um, around us in, in our environment. And in addition to the hadiths that I mentioned last night, I'd like to add a hadith that I'm sure a lot of you have heard. But I'd like to also mention the context of the hadith, which is very important. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam sends one of his um, companions, um, one of his very close companions by the name of Malik al-Ashtar, to govern. And so he also gives him an oath. And this oath contains the set of things that he needs to do. And this is very, this is, this is the Shia version of political science. It's very important for all Shias that want to get into this field to read this oath of Malik al Ashtar. It's, it's narrated in Nahj al Balagha, also in other um, books on hadith. It's a very beautiful oath. Amir al Mu'minin says, he says a number of things to Malik. One of the things that he says, he says to Malik that you need to have mercy and kindness and love and gentleness within your heart towards your citizens. Now, the reason why Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam says that you need to have this within your heart is very important because oftentimes you would see that a, a certain politician comes along. He may be um, orange colored. And so he comes along and he looks like he is trying to help the people. But in fact, what he's trying to do is a, is a hypocrite. What he's trying to do is get elected in a second term. And so he'll do anything that he can. If it means that he will give um, his nation some money, he'll do that. But whatever goes against his interest, he will do that again. He will do that um, in addition to other the things that he may have done in the past, including endangering the lives of Muslims, uh, sorry, of millions um, by not mandating masks, for example, or um, making vaccination compulsory or whatever. What I'm trying to say is that Amir al-Mu'mineen says that you shouldn't be like that on the outside only. You need to have this in your heart. You need to love your citizens. You need to love your nations. You need to have mercy towards them in your heart. In other words, you need to be genuine about this. You cannot be a hypocrite. Then 
Amir al-Mu'ni says to him, he says, and you couldn't be or you shouldn't be a beast that takes every opportunity to eat its prey. And this again, kind of gives us an example of, of current, current day politicians. These are looking for every opportunity to get more votes. And so if it means that um, they need to give money to the people, they'll do that. But if it means that they'll go out of their way to forge um, you know, some, some, some sort of agreement with, with other countries against the will of their own people, they'll do that as well. It doesn't matter because they will do whatever is in their best interest, not in the, in the best interest of, of the nation. Then Amir al-Mu'min mentions the part that is, that is famous. He says, for they are your nation. Your citizens are of two types, either your brother in faith or your equal in creation. Your neighbors, and I'm talking to the audience here, your neighbors are either Muslims or Shias, or if they're not Shias, if they're not Muslims, then at least they're your equal in the fact that you're both human beings. And so I'm not trying to say that we shouldn't protect other people or that we shouldn't um, respect other people or that we shouldn't treat them with kindness. I'm not trying to say that. But we have to understand that we are different. You know, in, in, in things like their belief in God, in our religious practices, even to small things like our hygiene, or things like the hijab, for example. We need to understand that we are different. Therefore, there cannot be any assimilation in terms of our beliefs and our religiously mandated um, practices. We cannot let go and compromise our religion for the sake of assimilation. And so, um, Although we, we protect other people and we respect them and we treat them with, with kindness and, and good manners, we understand that we are different. And any uh, attempt at uh, assimilation in regards to our beliefs and our um, actions is actually counterproductive. It's, it's dysfunctional and it's even unsustainable at times. And so, we need to understand that we need to protect our uh, religious practices. We need to protect our culture. And in fact, this needs to be on the top of the list of, of our, uh, uh, our community leaders. We need to understand that there are things that we won't let go of. These are, the, you know, this, these are our beliefs. And we can't let go of our belief in Islam. Listen to this hadith. Amir, uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, um, tells us that we shouldn't let go of our uh, culture. Again, when I'm, when I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about our religious culture. So cultural, a uh, culture that is based, traditions and culture that are based on our religion. Um, we need to protect this at all costs. Listen to this hadith from Imam Sadiq. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam narrates a hadith from Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen says in his will to his companions, he says, اعلموا أن القرآن هدى الليل والنهار Know that the Quran is a source of guidance during the day and during the night. Maybe. The reason why Amir al-Mu'mineen differentiates between night and day could be um, uh, a, a signal at uh, what is mentioned in the Quran. The days of, of the absence of, of the Imam, the days of the occultation of the Imam are referred to in the Quran as dark nights. ظُلُمَاتٌ uh, فَوْقَ uh, So maybe Amir al-Mu'mineen is saying that the Quran is a source of guidance during the days of the presence of the Imam as well as the days of the occultation of, of the Imam. اعلموا أن القرآن هدى الليل والنهار ونور الليل المظلم The Quran is a 
source of light. It is a torch in the nights that are exceptionally dark. Then Amir al-Mu'minin says, فَإِذَا حَضَرَتْ بَلِيَّهِ If you were met with, with a great uh, tribulation, with some sort of hardship, فَجَعَلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ دُونَ أَنفُسِكُمْ If it means that you need to give your money away, then make sure that you give your money away in favor of yourselves. And this is natural. Then Amir al-Mu'minin says, وَإِذَا نَزَلَتْ نَازِلَهِ Then if something even greater came down upon you, a greater type of, of tribulation, فَجْعَلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ دُونَ دِينَكُمْ Make sure that you sacrifice yourselves for the sake of your religion. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ الْهَالِكِ مَنْ هُلِكَ دِينُهُ أو هَلَكَ Either هُلِكَ أو هَلَكَ مَنْ هُلِكَ دِينُهُ وَالْحَرِيبِ مَنْ حُرِبَ uh, Amir al-Mu'minin says that the person who perishes in reality is the person who, whose religion perishes. And the person who is a subject of theft is one whose religion is taken away from him. Again, this shows us that this religion should be protected at all costs. Our uh, religious customs and our religious uh, traditions are to be protected no matter what the circumstances are. Not only should we uh, be protective of our ideals and our customs, we shouldn't allow foreign, a, a foreign culture to infiltrate into our culture. We need to be protective of our own culture. For example, we shouldn't be celebrating Christmas. We are not Christian, brothers and sisters. We are Muslims. Our celebrations are reserved for Eid al-Ghadir, for example. And I would recommend that the mothers and the fathers make sure that they show their children, um, uh, you know, they teach their children about the joy of al-Ghadir. And so if it means that you do this, then do this. You give gifts to your children. You give money to your children. Make them understand the value of Eid al-Ghadir. We shouldn't be celebrating Easter, for example. Celebrate um, the night of the birth of Imam Zaman, salam, the 15th of Sha'ban. Yes, celebrate that. Have you know a great party at home. Instead of celebrating Christmas and Easter. Valentine's Day is, you know, it's out of the question for us. We are Muslims, brothers and sisters. And so we, we need to understand that as Muslims, we have different values. We have different traditions. We have different, uh, we have a different culture. And we are going to be protective of our own culture. And even if it, if it means to endanger our careers. So if you, as a sister, applies for a job, and they tell you that you'll need to take your hijab off, forget the job. Forget the job and stick to your hijab. In fact, people will respect you once they, they see that you respect your own beliefs, that you have things that you stick to, you have a number of morals that you won't give away. But if you're willing to take off your hijab as soon as um, a job offer arises, then they'll think to themselves, you know what, what if, what if she was uh, given a, a better salary? Then, they sh then this person might give this job away. And so even if it means to um, give up on our careers, we'll do that because we are supposed to be protective of our religious values. We are supposed to be protective of our culture and our uh, traditions. And this reminds me, of one of the friends here in Sydney who um, was looking uh, to get a job. He applied for the job. Um, they called him over for an interview. His name is Muhammad. And the person who was interviewing him said that I noticed that your name is Muhammad on the, uh, on the form. And 
I, I just wanted to say that, you know, you're probably a Muslim. I, I, I wanted to mention to you that part of your job, maybe you'll need to work, um, you, you'll need to move um, a bunch of alcohol. Um, and so are you okay with that? He said, no, I'm not okay. And so the person who was interviewing him said, are you sure? Because this could be a deal breaker. He said, yes, I'm sure. Um, I'm not going to move alcohol for anybody. He goes home. He receives a call next week. The person says, you know, everything looks good on paper. It's only the fact that you, you aren't um, budging to, uh, to, to move alcohol around. So if you're okay with this, then we can go ahead. Are you sure that you won't, um, you, you, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to move alcohol around? And he said, yes, I'm sure I'm not moving alcohol around for anybody. Next week, they call him and they say, you know what? We're going to give you the job anyway. And so once people understand that you are protective of your own values, of your own culture, and of your own um, ideals and morals, they will come to respect you. And so we are, are taught that we need to be protective of our culture no matter what the circumstances are. Of course, there's always taqiyya, but taqiyya comes when um, your life is in danger. And, um, and, and it's kind of, I, I mean, it's natural. If somebody holds a gun to your hand and uh, to your head, excuse me, and asks you, are you a Muslim? And if you say yes, they'll shoot um, a bullet into your head, then obviously you won't tell them the truth. This is what taqiyya essentially is. But when it's not endangering your life, when what is in danger is, is your career, is this, this nice house that you're seeing. And if they know that you're a Muslim, they won't sell you the house. Give up on the house, man. And this is what you know our forefathers did. This is what our fathers did. They, they protected this religion with their own lives, which is why we are uh, lucky enough to call ourselves Muslims today. And here is where I thought I'd mention this hadith. Beautiful hadith by Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, لو يعلم الناس ما في فضل معرفة الله عز وجل ما مد وعيونهم إلى ما مت الله به الأعداء من زهرة الحياة الدنيا ونعيمها. He says, if the, if the mu'mineen, if the believers knew what sort of benefits um, were held within the belief and the gnosis of God, then they wouldn't even look towards the things that our enemies have, this materialistic world. وَكَانَتْ دُنْيَاهُمْ أَقَلُّ عِنْدَهُمْ مِمَّا يَطَعُونَهُ بِأَرْجُلِهِمْ And if they were to understand the pleasure and the satisfaction of, of knowing and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this entire world, all of the belongings of our enemies would be equal to them or less than the dirt that they set foot on. Then, Amir, uh, excuse me, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, biha. They would be satisfied and pleasured by Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same type of pleasure that comes in living in heaven with the guardians of God. Then Amir, uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam uh, talks about knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to explain the entire hadith. Then Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, وَقَدْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ قَوْمٌ يُقْتَلُونَ وَيُحْرَقُونَ وَيُنْشَرُونَ بِالْمَنَاشِيرِ Before you, in the nations that came before you, there were people who were killed or burnt or sawed in half with saws and they wouldn't let go of their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَا يَرُدُّهُمْ عَمَّهُمْ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ مِمَّا هُمْ فِيهِ And so this, brothers and sisters, is what our forefathers did to protect this religion. And by God is the 
Ziyara of Arba'in, the event of Arba'in, the embodiment of, of standing strong in favor of our ideals, of our culture, of our beliefs in the face of, uh, of, of uh, oppression. No matter what the conditions and circumstances are, millions walk in the footsteps of Sayyidah Zainab to go to Hussein and pledge their allegiance year over year. Millions of people. I have seen this. I'm not sure if, if uh, you have been there, but I'm sure some of you have been there. Um, you go to the Ziyara of Arba'in and you see, I remember back in the days when it was freezing cold, people would sleep on the side of the road with no blankets and no sleeping bags. They would go to the Ziyara. In this day, when the temperatures in Iraq reached 50 degrees Celsius, people would walk from Basra, 600 kilometers, to Karbala. Some of the days they need to, um, they need to cover long distance, uh, distances because, because of the, uh, the distances between the cities. Some days they need to, they need to walk 60 kilometers during the day. And so they do that during the day in temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius. They do that. Why? Because they want to protect our customs. They want to protect our culture. This is what Ziyarat al-Arba'in is all about. It's what Zainab did. And this is what the Shi'as of Zainab will be doing until the Day of Judgment. During the days of Saddam, they did it. They'll do it today. It is said that on their way back from Sham, the person who was in charge of the caravan came to Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. He asked him, where is your destination? Where do you want to go? The Imam said, go ask my aunt Zainab. He goes to Zainab. Zainab tells him, I want to go to Karbala. It's been too long. I've spent way too many nights away from Hussein. I need to go back to Hussein. It's as if Zainab wants to go there and tell Hussein about his victory against oppression. It is said that the first person who came to visit Imam al Hussein on the Arba'in was the companion of the Prophet, Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari. He went to the grave, he went to Karbala, he was taken by his slave to the river of Furat. He did ghusl there. And this is what is recommended for the visitors of Imam Hussein. Then he came and his slave showed him the grave of Imam Hussein. He started to call out, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, as if asking Hussein, what happened to you? Where did you go, O Hussein? Three times, then he fell unconscious. When he regained consciousness, he noticed that there was somebody coming. He said to his slave, if this person, go and check who this is. If he is an enemy, then we need to hide. But if, it's, but if it is um, my master, Ali ibn al Hussein, then I will let you go free. He goes and it turns out to be Imam Zain al Abidin with his aunt Zainab. Zainab couldn't wait any longer. She threw herself off of the back of the camel to get to the grave of Hussein. She started, it is, you know, part of the poem, she started to say, Ya Nazilin bi Karbala hal indakum khabaron bi qatlana Know that Hussein's body was left under the sun for three whole days. Billah, 
صلى صلاة الميتين إمامها لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام على ولي الله وحبيبه السلام على خليل الله ونجيبه السلام على صفي الله وابن صفي السلام على الحسين المظلوم الشهيد السلام على أسير الكربا وقتيل الأبرا اللهم إني أشهد أنه وليك وابن وليك وسفيك وابن سفيك الفائز بكرامه هاي تشا باس پر جب دافع کرنے آئے تنے پاش پاش کو آبد پکائے دیکھ کر غازی لاش کو ہر چچا میں آپ کی تربا بنانے آیا ہوں سکین اب بھی ہے پیاسی بتانے آیا ہوں چچا میں آپ کی تربا بنانے آیا ہوں چچا میں آپ کی تربا بنانے آیا ہوں سکین اب بھی ہے پیاسی بتانے آیا ہوں چچا میں آپ کی تربا بنانے آیا ہوں چچا میں آپ کی تربا بنانے آیا ہوں بتاؤں کیسے چچا کیا گزر گئی ہم پر ہر ایک شہر میں مارے گئے ہمیں پتھر تھی مائی پھپیا میرے ساتھ اے علی کے پسر یہ سارے ظلم کے قصے سنانے آیا ہوں چچا میں آپ کی تربا بنانے آیا ہوں
चचा में आप की तुरबा बनाने आया हूँ हरम को छोड़ के कूपे से आ रहा हूँ चचा बता गए है तुम्हारी वसीयते बाबा वही हो कब्र छिदा था जहा पे मश की जा किया था शे से जो वादा निभाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ है तीन रोज से लाशे पे धूप का साया के हाल देख के रोता है कौन दिल मेरा गरीब हूँ मैं कफन तुमको दे नहीं सकता तुम्हारी लाश के टुकड़े उठाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ सकी न में ना के से गिर गई थी अभी वही है ताजा रिवायत कमर पे लिखी हुई है जारी खून जो इस वक्त एड़ियों से मेरी लई से खा के अभी ता जिया ने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ लाइन बची के गोहर को ऐसे छीना था गिरी जमी पे सकीना मैं खून रोता था वो जिस जमीन पे कानों से खून टप का था वो खाक रखने तुम्हारे सिरहाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ बगैर के तुम उतरे थे जीन से कैसे हरम तो लुट गए ये बाजू कट गए जब से पड़े थे दूर ये लाशे से आपके कब से कटे ये बाजू बदन से मिलाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ चर्चा में आप की तुरब बनाने आया हूँ याओ सैन हुसैन 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 इन बदने बे सर और 
این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از پیکر خونین بلا دیده اش پیکر خونین بلا دیده اش زیر سم عرصه جولا نکیز حسین از حسین از این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از او که غریب از تو زمین بسترش او که غریب از تو زمین بسترش پس سر او یک شب مهمان کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از این سپر محنت مهدی بلا این سپر محنت مهدی بلا سینه بشکسته عریان کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از و خدا یا رگ خلقوم او و خدا یا رگ خلقوم او جای لب رشته بران کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محن از زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از وای هگر کشته حسینی منی این همه زخمی تو به فرمان کیز وقت بکشتن برادر تو را هیچ نگفتن که جانان کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از پیکر خونین بلا دیده اش پیکر خونین بلا دیده اش زیر سم عرصه جولان کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از او که غریب از تو زمین بسترش او که غریب از تو زمین بسترش پس سر او یک شب مهمان کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از این سپر محنت مهدی بلا این سپر محنت مهدی بلا سینه بشکسته عریان کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از آن کیز حسین از حسین از و خدا یا رگ خلقوم او و خدا یا رگ خلقوم او جای لب رشته بران کیز جای لب رشته بران کیز این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از پیکر عباس علی روی خاک خفته بخون با بدنی چاک چاک ناله برا ور کروحی فداک این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از غرق بخون دید تن اید هرش یک تن و این زخم فراوان چرا گفت امو جسم تو عریان چرا یک تن و این زخم فراوان چرا این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از صورتم از ضربت سیلی که بود صبر و قرارم ز دل و زار بود جان عمو صبر و گناهم چی بود این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از این بدن بی سر عریان کیز حسین از حسین از این تن محنز زده از ها نکیز حسین از حسین از یا حسین یا حسین اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد یا حسین یا حسین یا حسین
Ya Hüseyin, Ya Hüseyin, Ya Hüseyin, Ya Hüseyin. وعد هذا يا ابو اليمة نعلي رايتك ونجي لزيارتك وعد هذا يا ابو اليمة نعلي رايتك ونجي لزيارتك بدمعنا وحسرة البينة نجي نحبي حبي على تل الزينبي على تل الزينبي فضمنا النحرك الدامي يظل طول العمر وحق دمع الخدر عليك نعوف هالينا ولا بهم نهم يا شيخ الزلم يا شيخ الزلم رفة رايات المشاية رفة رايات المشاية رفة رايات المشاية رفة رايات اي من ولاية لولاية الك نطوي الدرب يا نبضات القلب المشي بدربك يا ابو اليمه نحس مو مستحب علينا نحس وجب اللي بجد ما اثر نلقى نجي نبارك اله ونظل نتوسله يا خلينا نحب جد ما هذا نحس شرف تعب بس ما وقف تعب بس ما وقف كل ما يتعب تفرح روحه كل ما يتعب وكل ما يتعب تفرح روحه كل ما يتعب تفرح روحه كل ما يتعب من ولايه لولايه الك نطوي الدرب يا نبضات القلب المشي بدربك يا ابو اليمه نحس مو مستحب علينا نحس وجب اللي بجد ما اثر نلقى نجي نبارك اله ونظل نتوسله يخلينا نحب جدما هذا نحس شرف تعب بس ما وقف وتعب بس ما وقف كل ما يتعب تفرح روحه كل ما يتعب وكل ما يتعب تفرح روحه كل ما يتعب تفرح روحه كل ما يتعب يا لذة دربك وتعبة وعالي نعشق عشق يا لتنطر صدق أبو الموكب يرف قلبه إذا مشى يجو ويبكي لا بقو يحطينا على خد إذا طر الفجر ويبقى ينتظر يشوف الراية مرفوعة ترفرف بالسماء اللي بنحامل حماك الخادم فاتح درعانك الخادم فاتح درعانك الخادم فاتح درعانا يا حسين حسين يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون سيعلم الذين ظلموا آل بيت محمد أي منقلب سينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين Firstly, I want to thank our dear uh, guest, Samah to say Muhammad Kadam al Mudarasi, for taking his time out of his day and to have our two majalis for the last nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give you all the reward, inshallah, and thank you uh, for enlightening us for the two really uh, beneficial topics that we have received this year. Alhamdulillah, wa shukr. Jazakumullah, al khair. Inshallah, just to recap for the uh, our announcements, we will have the program for the day of Arba'in, inshallah, tomorrow at 5 p.m. for our Julus, starting with Ziyarat al-Arba'in and a short Masayib from Samahat al-Sayyid Muhammad al-Mudarrisi and finishing off with Noha in uh, multiple languages, inshallah. After that, uh, we will have Dua Tawassul program as per usual at 8.30 p.m., inshallah. We will recite the final salam for Ahlul Bayt Muhammad, Ahlul Bayt Al Nubuwa, Ma'adan Al Risal, Salam Allah Alayhim. A'udhu Billahi Min Al Shaytan Al Rajim. Bismillah Al Rahman Al Rahim. Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammadin Wa Ali Muhammad. Wa Ajil Farajahum. Wa Al An Aduahum Ya Kareem. Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammadin Abdika Wa Rasulik. وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأطيب وأطهر وأسنى 
وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل يا رب على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء البتول سيدتي نساء العالمين وصل يا رب على صبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين عليهم السلام وبالخصوص سيدي ومولاي أبا الفضل العباس وسيدتي ومولاتي زينب الكبرى عليهم السلام وصل يا رب على أمة المسلمين وحجة الله على خلقه علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الصالح الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا وهب لنا من رأفته ورحمته ودعاه وخيره يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا رب على سيد الكونين محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وآل محمد وآل محمد May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the amal of the mu'minin and mu'minat all of you dear brothers and sisters Inshallah, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 5 p.m. for our online Julus uh, via Zoom, Inshallah. Please check our social media channels for the link will be sent uh, to view uh, on there, Inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. السلام على خليل الله ونجيبه السلام على سفي الله ابن سفي السلام على الحسين المظلوم الشهير السلام على أسير الكربان و 
بقتيل الأبرار اللهم إني أشهد أنه بليك وابن بليك وسفيك وابن سفيك الفائز بكرامتك أكرمته بالشهادة وحبوته بالسعادة واجتبيته بطيب البلاد وجعلته سيدا من السعادة وقائدا من القادة وضائدا من الضادة وآتيته مبارس الأنبياء وجعلته حجة على خلقك من الأوسياء فأعذر في الدعاء بمنح النصر وبدل مهجته ليزدان قد عبادك من الجهالة وحيرة الضلالة وقد تبعذر عليه من قرته الدنيا وباع حده بالأرز للأدنى والشراء آخرته بالثمن الأوكاس وتغدرس وتردى في هوا وأسخت نبيك وأتى من عبادك أهل الشقاق والنفاق وحملت الأوزار المستوجبين النار فجاهدهم فيك صابرا محتسبا حتى سبك في طاعتك في طاعتك دم واستبيح حريم اللهم فلعنهم لا السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن سيد الأوسياء أشهد أنك أمين الله وابن أمين اشد سعيدا ومديت حميدا ومت 
تفقدان مظلوما شهيدا وأشهد أن الله منجز ما وعدك ومولك من خذلك ومعذب من قتلك فأشهد أنك وفيت بعهد الله وجاهدت في سبيله حتى أتاك اليقين فلان الله من قتل ولان الله من ظلم ولان الله أمة سماء بذلك فرضيات اللهم إني أشهدك أني بني لمن ظهر